for another day, Anders Bering Breivik listened to the graphic testimony of some of those who got away as he ranged around the island of Utoya, killing at will last July. As he sat in the court, Breivik scribbled his thoughts onto yellow notelets as the evidence unfolded. Ina Rangonis Libak, who's 22, was on kitchen duty when Breivik burst in firing. She was shot in the face, arms and chest and was convinced as the bullets hit her she was going to die. I had so much blood in my mouth, it tasted of blood and bullet. I thought to myself, so this is how it is to die. I remember the feeling of being shot. I thought my hands had been shot off. I couldn't feel anything. Despite being shot four times and scarred forever, Ina denied Breivik another fatality to add to his tally, as did Marta Johan Svensson, just 17 and also shot by the gunman. She was in the tent at camp when the bullet went through her arm. She survived, but many others didn't. When I was rescued, I saw a dead person in the water and there were at least ten dead bodies on the mainland. Ten months on, the memories are still raw. I got used to hearing shots. I heard the worst screams in my life. Many of those who survived did so by barricading themselves into the schoolhouse on Utoya. Among them, volunteer first aider Evan Andre Oinklepen, a 32-year-old lorry driver who crossed to the island on the same ferry as Anders Breivik and saw him calmly walking towards the schoolhouse. Breivik fired two shots at the entrance. I thought, what can I use to fight him if he comes in? The drama at the courthouse in Oslo wasn't confined to the witness testimony inside. Outside, a man turned away at the door, set fire to himself and was taken to hospital with serious injuries. David Bowden, Sky News.